Terrence Muhammad, T-E-R-E-N-C-E, Muhammad, M-U-H-A, M-U-H-A-M-M-A-D, that's my name. And before you start the time, I just have to say this. I came all the way from North Carolina to be here. All the way. Hold on, I ain't even finished. I came all the way from North Carolina, spent almost 12 hours in Chicago airport yesterday, got out, went to Kansas City at 1 a.m. yesterday morning or this morning, slept in the airport, got a rental car at 5 a.m. and drove five hours into the snow to be here. So please give me my time. I just wanted them to know that we support Nebraska against, against the Keystone XL Pipeline. So once again, my name is Terrence Muhammad, and I am representing the Hip Hop Caucus led by our CEO. Reverend Lennox Yearwood, one of the organizations that sponsored the largest climate control rally in the country, February 17th in Washington, D.C. As I stated, we are against the Keystone XL pipeline, and we also ask others to take a unified stand against this pipeline as well. The Hip Hop Caucus leverages the creative expression of hip hop to communicate what's going on in neglected neighborhoods and vulnerable communities of young urban adults and to provide a political and social voice of value. The Hip Hop Caucus involves a new generation in the democratic process with a meaningful platform and relevant programs created in a partnership with other leading organizations, mobilizing supporters to collectively exercise their voices to shape policy affecting their lives and further advance 21st century civil rights. As citizens, as citizens of this country and as citizens of the world, we have a moral obligation to pursue environmental responsible decisions. And the Keystone XL Pipeline, KSL, is absolutely not responsible or moral. One of the most important legacies we can leave for our children and future generations is a clean and safe environment. Tar sand pipelines are one of the filthiest objects we can add to our environment. The resultant CO2 emissions and risky toxic spills are risks that far outweigh any benefits of this pipeline. We are not just speaking out against the KSL pipeline because it is our choice. We are saying we have no other choice if we want to stop fossil fuel pollution, reduce our contribution to global warming, and pursue more sustainable energy sources. We all have a right to a cleaner environment and to protect our health, ultimately our very existence. Now, I'm, I'm coming to that end. I'm coming to that end. Trust me. The pipeline also exposes itself as an environmental justice issue as well. The pipeline will not be built through pretty, gated, suburban developments. This pipeline will not be next to a private schools or prestigious university. It will be built next to neighborhoods and homes of people whose no is not as strong. We can let the poor we can let the poor or minority populations pay the price of a pipeline that will cost them their health. We think not. We cannot. So knowing what we know about KSL, it seems remiss, irresponsible, and selfish to burden the future generations with the consequences of a pipeline that really is not all that beneficial in the first place. And we have an immediate obligation to help protect those unrepresented citizens that will feel the first environmental blow of this pipeline. Join us and say no to KSL. And this... And this is not just a civil rights. This is our lunch counter moment of the 21st century, and it's our right to exist on the planet. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening. My name is Father Thomas Donovan, D-U-N-A-V-A-N. I'm the son of Bill Donovan, who just spoke, and my mother, Susan, spoke about an hour ago, and I get my quiet and shy nature from them. I'd like to thank you, Teresa, Patrick, and members of the media who are still holding out tonight to be here to hear the rest of the story. And I address this to John Kerry and to President Obama. 
I am a Catholic priest, and I was told by my boss to make sure that it was known that I don't stand for perhaps everything that the church teaches, um, because there could be Catholics who maybe would be pro-Keystone Pipeline. So I do not represent the Diocese of Lincoln or Grand Island or anything of that nature. I represent landowners and citizens of the state of Nebraska. I am against the Keystone Pipeline. And I wrote an ode to our government and to TransCanada. I greet thee in authority. I ask for thy attention. I use the divine comedy to cut through this extra tension. In the eighth circle of hell, Dante places those who caved to avarice. Caccia Nemico is one who caved to greed and material wealth. He turned over his own sister to the Marquis de Este. To curry favor and for love of gain, he used his stealth and ended up suffering at the devil's whip. Move on, you pimp. You can't cash in on women here. And to our government, state and local, and others in far-flung office, who heed not letter, nor voter, or cries of sons or daughters, but oft bow down to loony or greenback and union dues within their coffers. Is this greed for jobs at the cost of citizenry worth a reputation? Was this not what caused our ancestors to cry out against an unjust nation? Taxation without representation was a rallying cry, and tea went in the harbor and blood was spilt, and none here can deny. Yet when a foreign company comes with forms and lease and papers, and no permit yet, and still the threat of excavators and scrapers, Perhaps it's been a living purgatory for those with rights beholden in a country vast and just as wide and laws that can be broken. A governor takes power in his hands and wields an iron sickle and landowners cry foul with voice raised high. We are in quite a pickle. Dante with Virgil voice from their graves, their blood at just a trickle. Purgatorio Canto 8 tells how we see it from our token. My guide said, Son, what are you staring at? I answered him, At those brilliant torches lighting up all the polar region there. And he to me, Those four bright stars you saw this morning now are underneath the mount, and these have risen here to take their place. But then Sordello clutched his arm and said, Behold our adversary over there. He pointed to the place where we should look. Along the little valley's open side, a serpent moved, the very one, perhaps, that offered Eve the bitter fruit to eat. Through grass and flowers slid the vicious streak, stopping from time to time to turn its head and lick its back to make its body sleek. And so we live to fight this vicious streak, this serpent, if you will, which winds its way from north to south through grass and flower and till. And all we're told is to close our eyes. There will never be a spill. We are partners now, I guess. That means TransCanada's our shield. Yet buy and sell and dupe and lie and pressure on the will. And conscience laid to side will open man to yield. Custodians... Are we of this tierra free? The red man knows the drill. The gouge and steam and jostling black gold will give our fill. Custodians are we of this tierra free? The red man knows the drill. Thank you. My name is Laura Mush, L-A-U-R-A-M-E-U-S-C-H. I really want to thank you guys for being here, but I also want to know, are you people listening to us? All the speakers before me have pretty much said everything I want to say, but as I sit here, I keep writing and rewriting and rewriting this, so I apologize when you guys get this. It's a mess. Um, 
I walked in the building this morning and was greeted by a gentleman who asked me if I was for or against the pipeline. And I said, I'm against the pipeline. And he proceeded to tell me about a letter he received from TransCanada. He is a landowner on Keystone One. A pro pipeline speaker before said, there is no boogeyman. I'm here to tell you there is, and it's TransCanada. The man I talked about before has Keystone One on his property. They put it there against his wishes. He didn't want it. No one was standing there with him like we're standing here now. He didn't want it then, but it was forced on him. He called them because there was a gaping gash in the top of the dirt where this pipeline is supposed to be. He wanted them to come and fix it, and they told him, we can't right now. Could you fix it for us, or could you hire someone to do it? So they agreed on a $4,000 price for him to do that. And so he said, okay, I'll see if I can get someone to do it. And so they agreed on this $4,000 price, and so he, uh, they sent him a letter to say that they would, they would pay his price if he did this. The letter states, now that I have been paid this, I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's too technical. Basically, they say, if you accept this money, you are now liable for anything that ever goes wrong with that pipe. It's on your property. You are liable for it. Not only are you liable for it, every heir you ever have is liable for what happens to that pipe on your property because you fixed it instead of us. How is that good? How is that being a good neighbor? I'm going to run out of time, so I'm going to skip a lot of stuff here. Um, there have been lots of talks about all the jobs this will create. Um, if we need jobs in this country, let's fix the infrastructure we currently have. Our bridges and roads are gone. These workers can fix those. We don't need this pipeline that's going to kill us. The boogeyman does exist. It's TransCanada. And as for our men and women dying in a foreign country for us right now fighting, that can end, too, if we just bring them home. This pipeline isn't going to end that. This pipeline is bringing oil that we cannot use in this country. It's a grade four oil that it makes, fuel that it does. The sulfur content is too high. We cannot burn it in this country. I'm out of time. I have a lot more to say. Please listen to us. President Obama, if you really want to be a climate change president, then you need to fix this. This pipeline cannot happen. Please deny this pipeline. Thank you.